Today on the news, uh. everyone died. <laughs> uh, okay, we're, we're rolling. Um, haven't used that term in a while. We haven't made movies in a while. You know, I kind of miss making movies. Me too, occasionally. It'd be fun to do like a really, really shitty short one. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I kind of blame myself because I was doing the bulk of the editing. I, I'm the only person in the group who knew how to use editing software <laughs> other than Ken, I guess. But, uh, you so know that, that scene that, that, that was kind of frustrating for me. I think that's why I decided that I'm, I'm done with this. You know that scene in um in 2001: A Space Odyssey where all the monkeys are hitting bones and screeching. Uh -huh. Picture that, and then there's a view of an editing software in the little front. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so weird because like I saw like a screenshot of uh, the part where they throw the bone up in the air. Yeah, uh, that was actually on the the uh, Facebook page SpongeBob. Every SpongeBob frame in order. Because it was like a frame where a muffler is in midair right before it hits Mrs. Puff in the head. Oh my. And it's like uh, somebody posted the bones. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's been a while since I thought of... Uh... Actually, no. I thought about uh, 2001 Space Odyssey recently because uh, somebody mentioned the, the Space Jam sequel that's still in development, I guess. I don't know if it's still in development, but according to some random person in the Twitch chat of a Vine Sauce stream, I guess it's still in development. Um... It just made me think about uh, Roy Nesbitt, who uh, worked on The Thief and the Cobbler. Mm -hmm. He he worked. He was the originally got to start as the visual effects supervisor on 2001: Space Odyssey, and then he later went to become the visual effects or the background designer of uh, Space Jam. <laughs> and I think that was his last credited role. So yeah, what, what a movie to, to fucking end on. on. Yeah, to end on. Yeah. I think you, it, like I remember. Um, I think it was the Space Jam's. Uh, anniversary because i follow the uh the persistence of vision the uh thief and the cobbler documentary mm -hmm. page on facebook they were like posting on uh roy nesbitt's behalf and i mentioned how uh, did you know that uh, did you know also that roy nesbitt mocap the scene where michael jordan stretches his arm across the basketball court like stretch armstrong at the end <laughs> that man sure can dunk i think it was like in his 70s at the time oh i think God. he's actually still alive too He's, out, he's outlived uh, Richard Williams, R.I.P. Oh. Yeah. Um, but I don't think he's doing much. There is a thing that I wholly, whole, totally respect as is, is, is a vision-driving work. Mm -hmm. I respect it, but I also love when it goes terribly wrong. Mm. You can get the idea behind Thief and the Cobbler, or you can get Sonichu. They're both driven by vision, <laughs> if you agree. Uh -huh. Another good example is Jodorowsky's Dune, which also never got made. I think we talked about that before. Is yeah. That it didn't even get past pre-production. It got finished with pre-production, and then like they pitched to the studio, and they're like, "No, we're not gonna, we're not gonna make a ten-hour-long movie. We're not gonna fund that." Nobody's you could them. make it in the in the five three-hour movies. <laughs> yeah, that's. I think John Rouse could have been like, "No, that's copping out." <laughs> I will rape Frank Herbert as much as I want. That quote is one of my favorites out of context. Yeah. I also like. Uh, this is like uh, near the end of the documentary where he's talking about like the studios like much like Richard Williams he just had a hatred of money it was just there to ruin his life because like it, you need money to make a movie or make your creative vision come yeah. to life and then like at that point he's just he takes out his wallet it's all this it's like it's this it's he's just pulling out dollar bills out of his wallet it's just like it's all this fault this this shit this shit gets in my way and he, I'm sorry Mr. Drew like throwing it like a stripper <laughs> get the hell out of here. True story about that. My mom once made a pizza man very uncomfortable. He came to deliver pizza at the nursing home she works at, and um, she only had ones, so she fucking made it rain on him. <laughs> it's like, ma'am, I get paid by the hour, please. <laughs> well, just let me get back to it. I get paid per, be per delivery, which should, which whichever makes him more upset. I don't know. I, I I just picture a man just very quietly going home, and his wife's like, "What happened to you, Tom?" And Tom's like. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I felt so used. More than usual, I guess. You know, the pizza man is like... You will never find a pizza man if he comes to a party going, to, oh, oh, this dude. You're never like, yeah, woo! <laughs> He's like a drug dealer, so they don't let him eat the pizza, too. <laughs> uh, speaking about... Uh, what was the tone of that? I guess, depre like, depression or whatever... Uh, happy 9-11, everybody. Uh, uh, well, by now, it's probably a week since then, so everybody's already forgotten about it. Yeah. It's funny how, like, that, yeah, like, never forget, but it's just one day out of the year, I guess. 
Uh, fun fact: I found out that uh, one of, or that um, my uncle got divorced on 9/11. Huh. Hmm. Everybody has a 9/11 story that's interesting, except for me. Like for me, it's just you know, I went to school, like, and then like we got sent home early, and I was really happy about that. Um, and afterwards, everybody was just talking about 9/11 all the time, and I'm like, oh, this all this 9/11 talk is making me annoyed. You know what? Um, apparently, my story was told to me secondhand because you know I was yeah. fucking two at the time. Mm. Yay, I'm young. Anyways, um, uh, me and my mom were in the living room, and uh, I had my dinosaur toys out, and apparently, uh, fucking chaos went down. So they're like, T Rex, <laughs> whatever the fuck two year olds do. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, it makes me think of uh, Christopher Titus, uh, this comedian. I remember one of his specials. Uh, he was talking about uh, when, uh, like, his daughter was born, like, a week after 9... Or, like, a week before... Yeah, a week after 9-11. And, like, when it happened, he was he was like, I, I, I just went into the operating room, and I just tr- kept trying to shove her back into my wife. Like, I can't bring this child into this world. <laughs> you know what? Um, You know what is kind of interesting about 9-11 stuff? If you watch a lot of media that came out before the Twin Towers fell... There's a lot of references to the, you know, because the Twin Towers are the biggest building in the world at the time. Mm-hmm. In the Godzilla animated series, they had a line, oh no, he's playing dominoes with the Twin Towers. <laughs> and when you see that out of context, you kind of sit there for a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, I remember in the, uh, the Godzilla movie, uh, in the 97 movie, they were talking about the, tw- the World Trade Center bombings, which happened like, 10 or so years before mm-hmm. 9-11 happened. So they were a target by terrorists before then. So it, uh, it makes it makes a bit more sense when you have, like, media referencing the Twin Towers or whatever. Yeah. And also Rem Lazar. <laughs> like, have you seen that episode of Red Letter Media? No. It's the uh, best of the worst. Um, I won't spoil it for you, but I think the less you know about it going in, the better. I really... You know, I like Best of the Worst, but I really, really like Review. Because mm-hmm. um, Josh... And Jack, you know, they're kind of take them or leave them with main show. I noticed that they're not in, really in, uh, like, even Best of the Worst episodes much anymore. Yeah, I think they do better on review and half in the bag. Yeah. Or on review mainly. Like, they take films a bit more seriously. They're less about, uh, like, jokes, I guess. But there was a couple times... Of, you know who my favorite guy was on there? Remember that dude who was on the one? He was the dude who, um, who was on Spooky, that one? Um, who looked like a stereotypical creepy uncle? Hmm. Uh, I don't remember that. Yeah, he was on Best of the Worst. I forget his name. I really liked him, and I don't know what his name is. Hmm. Yeah, you'll have to send me a link or something later. Yeah. It was the one uh, that also had uh, Action USA, I think, on it. Okay. Yeah. Is that uh, Len Kabazinski? No. Okay, never mind. Yeah, he's, he's, he's too young to be a creepy weirdo. <laughs> I mean, he's... He you know, but there's people who look like the creepy uncle. They're just born with that. Yeah. It's something that all men who go bald must deal with. Mm-hmm. Uh. Now, back to 9-11. <laughs> um, like, like, whenever I think of 9-11, I always think of the uh, Newgrounds Flash games that came out. Uh, like, like Beat Up Osama? Beat Up Osama, Hunt Down Osama, Dress Up Osama. I remember there was a one Osama dress up game where if you take off all his clothes, he has like tits that lactate when you click on them, and he has a vagina. <laughs> Thank you so much, Newground, for your classy... Ever topical love. Uh-huh. I want to go on Newgrounds more often. I know I've talked about like animation. Like if I want, there is some really nice art on there. Yeah, like what's interesting about it. I think I've talked about this before, but the animation that was made like back in two thousand, like the early to mid two thousands and beyond, it was all done in Adobe Flash, and because it was all done on, like with uh, vectors mm-hmm. instead of uh, rasters, like uh, it all looks like brand new in HD. Uh, because it's, uh, like it's adaptive to displays rather than just being a static image. If, it's, know, it's hard to explain to somebody who doesn't know anything about uh, like vectors versus rasters. I, I I know a little about them. Like with vectors, it's like no matter how much you zoom in, it still stays like uh, smooth. I guess. And like raspers the, don't have that same quality. Like it, uh, yeah. If you zoom in, then you can see the pixels. But with vectors, you can't see the pixels. I think that's why vector art's popular for stock images. I think. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. If you're making like logos or uh, emojis, then yeah, it's a uh, you use vectors. Yeah, um, y- you know, it's interesting how events like nine eleven and column. I mean, I mean yeah, like nine eleven, it certainly changed uh, how destruction is d- depicted in uh, 
in movies. Like the Avengers, I think about the end of Avengers and how they show like the memorials and like how like the weight of like all the destruction, like the after effects. Even like, if that never happened, it would have just been them reveling in chaos. And- yeah, like uh, you think about that compared to Independence Day. And Independence Day, they reflect on that a bit, a bit, but they did. They, it wasn't uh, like super somber. It was like it was kind of like more. Uh, post-apocalyptic in the way that Mad Max is post-apocalyptic. You know, I've never gotten into Independence Day. Yeah, I mean, it's a guilty pleasure of mine, I think. Like, it, there is one thing I respect about it. It's part of my favorite subgenre of uh, fiction, uh, sci-fi, though. Mm-hmm. I call it humanity, fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. It's where it's like, you know, we've got these alien warrior race sending the humans. Mm-hmm. Warhammer 40k, for example. Mm-hmm. Another one is hey, probably Dune. Um, because I think that one of the big plot points with the uh, Gum Jabbar is that mm. uh, it's a test to see if a creature is human or not, and that like I guess humans are like the dominant species in the universe, and that's why like they're so revered. I don't know. I, I don't know much about like the actual Dune books or lore or whatever, but I think that's how it works. I you know, it's also humans are really adaptable. That's like our great feat. Yeah. I mean, uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, going outside of sci-fi. Yeah. Um, an even better one is, if you think about it, most American comic book companies. Only humans get that gene that's like, yeah, I got the X gene, I got the quirks. Hmm. You don't see a chimpanzee with a quirk, do you? I mean, it depends on where you look, I guess. Oh. I mean, you look at uh, DC Comics, like you got all the gorilla, like Gorilla City Kind of like that. And that's why they... I wonder if in the DC universe if guerrilla poaching has gone up or down because of that. Hmm. Yeah, like, I would like to see comics that pose more, like, interesting questions like that. Just, like, the tiny little subtleties here and there. Like, if you... Like, um... I mean, subtle for giant gorilla's sake, I guess. Yeah. You don't talk shit about monkeys on the Monkey Bar podcast. <laughs> 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 Um, yeah, you know what one thing I also really remember is how 9-11 played into the major plot of Metal Gear Rising. Oh, yeah, like they cut, uh, they cut most of the, uh, end cut scene for that, I remember, because, like, there was a cut scene that they either storyboarded or, like, were in the rough stages of animating where, uh, Arsenal Gear crashes into Manhattan and then topples over a ton of buildings or something. And there's like, it's all like shot from like a news uh, camera pr- pr- perspective. I would have honestly kind of liked that. Yeah, I would have liked to see. It like would have been a, like Metal Gear 2's ending. Uh, okay, I, I, I'm not familiar with that. Um, in Metal Gear, no, Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. Oh, well, that's uh, what I'm talking about. Oh, where Raiden fights uh, the guy with robot arms on top yeah. of the building. Yeah. Oh, Arsenal Gear. Mm hmm. I got him mixed up with the one that General Armstrong rode. Okay. Metal Gear Excelsius is the one he rode. Okay. Yeah. Holy shit, yeah. Mm-hmm. And also, uh, I think uh, with uh, Grand Theft Auto 3, there was some cut content. Like, there were supposed to be airplanes, and they cut those out. There is one airplane that you can find, but it perform like, it's, it's, I think it's intentionally programmed to perform extremely poorly. You can barely keep it up in the air for very long. And I think it's hidden pretty well, too. It's still a cool Easter I like Easter eggs like that. Mm-hmm. Man, um... And now a rock star just tries to hide uh, gambling mechanics in their game. Or, like, they're just doing the most minimal effort now, I guess. Surprise mechanics. Mm-hmm. Hey, this is really off topic, but you know Soul Calibur games? Mm-hmm. I only recently learned that the guy who voices Astroff in the second game is not him in any of the other games. And I only realized that when I listened to it. In the newer games, he's like, you know, I'm Astroff. I want to kill someone. Then you get to Soul Calibur 2, like, massacre. And he's like really, really intimidating. Hmm. To the point that I looked up his voice actor to see if he was still alive and also doing work. Turns out he does radio jingles now. Hmm. Kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Soul Calibur is a really underrated series. Yeah. I mean, it's had a brief spike in popularity with Six. Yeah. The character creation's awesome, oh, but also... That was, like, the highlight. That's, that's what people bought the game for, I think. That... I, I kind of wanted to get the story of it, because the story... They have funny ring outs. Like, my favorite one is, like, I will never end, is what happens when you do it and you do it again. That's, what did I just tell you? Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry. That's fine. 
I want to be that passionate where I'm able to like just sit down for like 12 hours a day and uh, crank out like a minute of animation per day. Woo, look at that, 12 hours. You can see his hair moving the wind. Yeah. Uh, one of the artists I follow on Twitter, Pokemon. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I've shown you him. Uh, he's the guy who does the uh, waifu casting couch uh, collection. No. Uh, no, I'm going to pull it up real quick um, because I really like his artwork. Um, he does uh, really good uh, shapes and uh, just really, he, he captures these uh, characters really well. Um, I'm, I'm definitely not going to be able to show this on uh, YouTube when I uh, upload this video, but um, God, where is it? And anyway, uh, he, like he actually uh, did an interview with a, uh, I don't, I don't even know what kind of, I guess a hentai site or whatever, hentai news, if that is a thing. I didn't really look at the... Uh, in other news, Shadman posts new controversial piece. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he, uh, here's, here's his most recent one of, uh, King of, one of the King of Fighters characters. Oh, I know that, uh, that's my Shamiru. Yeah. I hate that I know that character. Yeah. I mean, uh, people are looking into the characters now that uh, Terry Bogard is in Smash. Yeah. It's a playable character? Yeah. Oh, fuck. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Pokemon's put out, like, uh, probably more than 100 of these at this point. And uh, he does, like, one every day, which I find astonishing. Do you think he does a lot of work in progress and then slowly? Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, no. I've seen him... I've seen one of his streams, and he does, like... He, he did, like, two from scratch over the span of, like, two hours. And, like, that is just... Like, yeah, That's front, fucking mind-boggling to me. Yeah, front to back, finished in, like, both of them completely finished in two hours. And it was just, Even different backgrounds? Uh, no, it was the same background. Oh, still, but um, that's still impressive, the character itself, oh, of that yeah. quality of detail. Absolutely. That fidelity. Yeah. Um, really, I hope to be at that level someday, and, I'm, and even if I am, even the day I do get there, I still won't be satisfied with it at all. I, know, was, I was watching the uh, one of the DVDs I picked out from the uh, library. Mm -hmm. It was about uh, independent comics. It's about like an hour long, and uh, I only watched like uh, 10 or 15 minutes of it because I just wanted to make comics like really bad while I was watching the whole thing. But they made a point that you know, like you're never going to be satisfied with your work. Stop comparing your work to other people, which is stuff that I've heard before time and again. But it's it, when it's really laid out like that, then, then it strikes a chord because, um, like, once you actually hear it from people who are in the industry, I think that that uh, strikes a different chord than just like hearing about it or hearing from people who've heard it from people. It uh, from mouth of God is the best way to hear it. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, I need to like crank that mindset into my brain just. I wish I was more obsessed with uh, creating my stuff. Here's what's weird with me. I cannot get these worlds out of my fucking head. Yeah. I cannot put them on paper. Mm -hmm. I, I, I call it wrangling because I have, I have to wrangle my writing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know that um, I was reading through the Animator Survival Guide and Richard Williams was talking about a colleague of his who uh, would just uh, meditate and think, put put. put put away time like for like an entire week and just think about what uh, he wants to do. Think about it and just drill that into his head. And then when it, he finally sits down to draw, he, it would just explode and he would just like, like crank it out over the course of like six hours. And you'd have like a three minutes um, animation done from all that uh, creative energy built up in his head. I um, want to try that. Yeah. Well, according to Richard Williams, it was uh, like... For him, there was no difference between that and uh, just doing it, just sitting okay. down and doing it. And I guess it depends on. I want to say it depends on the person. It might be. It might be that. It might be. You know. It, it might also be interchangeable. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's stuff that I just want to do, like now more than ever. Now that I saw that documentary. The thing that I've always, you know, struggled with is, you know, the creative impulse is a lot stronger than the drive to create, almost, I'd say. Yeah. Like, there's a difference between uh, inspiration and dedication. That's something I've been hearing about a lot lately, is you can be inspired, you can be motivated, but that's only for the short term. The long term is, like, dedication and schedule, being on a schedule. 
Um, once you get, once you get in the habit, that's where it's like you're really going to get uh, work done. That's also kind of why I hate watching a lot of superhero or like even superhero, just a lot of movies I like because mm-hmm. I'll sit down and I'll watch it. Like remember Bad Angelita? Mm-hmm. I fucking came. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna write me up a fucking story. Yeah, and then like four pages in, I'm like, uh, done. Yeah, and I felt so fucking bad because I, 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 I don't want to toot my own horn. I think I have these really mm, possibly great ideas. Hmm. I hate to say it like that. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, yeah, like one thing that uh, actually Thomas, or maybe been somebody else in the Discord, the Street Web Comics Discord, but they made a point of saying that um, in order to succeed, you have to have a level of arrogance. Like you're not, you're not going to get uh, people to recognize your talent if you don't like toot your own horn. Well, I'm going to take this motherfucking horn. Uh-huh. I apologize. That's actually how Grant Morrison got his starts. When he was doing... Uh, Watchmen? No, it was... For, you're, you're confusing him with uh, Alan Moore again. Fuck! Uh, Grant Morrison, when... I think I think his first successful uh, uh, original comic was uh, Zenith. And it was uh, like this sort of realistic take on superheroes. I guess kind of like The Boys, if we're going to like draw comparisons. like. But uh, the way he got it started was he just started by just completely trashing other comic creators saying you know frank miller dark knight rises man that thing is shit uh watchmen total shit it's all garbage compared to our comic which is superior in every single way to those to like to those hack frauds like not i'm, I'm paraphrasing obviously but yeah but like uh you gotta have like a certain level of just like oh i'm this this is how good this is how good i am you have to have ego in a way yeah like, otherwise, like, you're just going to be a wallflower. Yeah, you know, that's something I fucking need to work on, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I think most uh, comic creators are like that. Like, they're very solitary. They're very withdrawn. Um, it's a habit that I've just sort of gotten over just by being angry at everything all the time. <laughs> Tap into the retard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the theme of uh, that uh, comic is just somebody who's so angry that it just, like... You have to have a character that has a, that's, like, I apologize for interrupting. <laughs> Who, like, maybe Raytard thinks he's angry, but he goes, like, you're not even pissed yet. Mm-hmm. Why? And he goes on this long motherfucking rant and throws him back in the Raytard for round two. Uh-huh. I had this uh, set piece in mind where he's fighting against uh, his first uh, other Mac, Mac opponent, mm-hmm. and it gets to the climax where they both like shoot the beams at each other and they clash, yeah. and then she goes, Aah! and then title card three hours later, and then they're still going, and it's just <laughs> they're just in the puck cockpits like super bored, <laughs> like oh god, I'm just gonna end. The guy pulled that fucking phone. Yeah. This is like, I, I feel like that's gonna be pretty funny when it comes. I out. have a question. Will there be a row at the truth later if it's Dick? I'll have to write that down. <laughs> uh, Call it the Lancer or some dumb shit like that. Oh yeah, like each uh, each uh, robot will have its own de- designation. Like the main one is obviously Raytard. Uh, there's like one that's like a like some other designs I have in my head, but I haven't written down yet. So I'm gonna do that after we re- finish recording. I I also hope that they add mutants in this, like giant kaiju like monsters. I think that that might be able to, I might be able to fit that in, depending. I mean, I'm pretty still pretty early on in uh, developing the story. It even has like a different ending than what I originally had. When he doesn't, I he doesn't go supernova. Uh, like, what do you mean? Or I'm sorry, I vaguely remember you saying like, didn't he go like super super mad or some shit like that? Uh, like that's at the beginning where oh. it breaks out for the first time. Um, like, but the ending, uh, from what, I, like, I think I first saw this, like, half a year ago mm-hmm. was, like, it had a different ending now than, a, I don't know, like I said, when it's this early on in development, it's hard to, like, pin down exactly how it's going to go, but I think I have a better, like, concrete vision of this. I want to get it done, like, fairly quickly, because I, I know I have the yesterday kids to work on, and, like, before I switched to that, I had Cat Kid, which I now put on the shelf, and Cat Kid, by the time I get to that, it might be, all, like, 90% different after... Because, like, the Yesterday Kids is going to be, like, a really long-term project. It might take me, like, probably almost a decade to finish that from what I have right now. You know, 
I I understand the pain you're going through of just fucking switching stores like a goddamn roulette table. Mm-hmm. I mean, add to the fact that I like my I still have sleep apnea and haven't gotten my mouth guard fixed, and probably won't have that taken care of until the end of the month. I've, I'm I'm basically like fueled on caffeine right now and ramen, uh, but mix them. <laughs> what you do is you oh, that's use gonna a... taste terrible. Like I have the five hour energy and just like mixing all that fruity flavor. No, with... what you do is you break up the uh, you break up the noodles and you just pour five hour energy of the water to broth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I'm gonna go through all that effort, I may as well just go on meth. <laughs> <laughs> Join the fucking family. Uh-huh. I found uh, part yeah, of my. I'm gonna be in the uh, in the Arizona desert uh, burying corpses and uh, like. I mean, I'm and while make... you're out in Arizona, you'll encounter a Star Wars fatty friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Airsoft fatty. Airsoft yeah. fatty. That would be in Michigan, which probably actually no, this is. This is friends say that the crazy one. So you oh, yeah, in. yeah. <laughs> you just hear, like, you know, the fucking, like, is this the power of a rival stand? <laughs> he buried him with a lightsaber in his hand. <laughs> no, that's what he stabbed him with. It was like he actually killed Darth Maul's actor. He just cut him in half. <laughs> God. I gotta watch that again. It, it was such an interesting uh, snapshot. It's almost an ethnographic documentary in a way. Yeah. I don't know if I asked, but how much did you like personally identify with it? A lot more than I'd like to fucking mention on a live tape. Uh-huh. I'm like, I'm, I, I'm fucking related to this guy somewhere up that family tree. Because I wasn't quite sure. And then the fucking cast show up. I'm like, oh no, oh no, it's on Gene's side. It's on Gene's side. <laughs> The fucking cat with the little ballerina dress and the missing eye who only eats birthday day ice cream from Myers. Mm-hmm. My fucking god. <laughs> I feel like uh, I think I was reading like through the YouTube comments, mm-hmm. and they were saying like how like a lot of these are are- like a lot of these uh, people living in these areas, mm-hmm. they're probably like this because of uh, like they're not getting clean water or like there's like. Like the chemicals in the water turning the frogs gay, and I guess people psychotic now. But like, there's legend and stuff in there, and that, that might be an explanation. But I don't know. I'm just I'm, just picture those big glasses he's drinking of. You know, the big one this tall. Goes, picture that's fucking all half lead is what he's drinking. God. The, that's what's in the secret Fortnite potion. Is, uh, that's what that's what uh, make, give, makes it powers the shield is lead. Oh, no. And that, and that's why all these uh, teenagers are so stupid. Yeah, he's a fucking... <laughs> Airsoft Fatty is a fucking champion. I love him. Yeah. Yeah, what was really inspiring was that he was, like, actually trying to lose weight, and apparently he was succeeding. I, I've been trying to. It's... it's... Oh, yeah, you, you, like, I think that uh, you look better than you did uh, a year ago. <laughs> yeah, you know... I but... suck your dick. <laughs> God... <laughs> By the way, have you ever heard of Airsoft Fatty? I'm sorry. I'm going to no, change. No, no, change that subject, please. <laughs> change it, change it, change it. With um, the fucking, like, the driving, the fucking SUV, I'm going to get this thing fuel injected. <laughs> yeah, it's, fucking, it's like a minivan, yeah. Not I even know. an SUV. Not even an SUV. It's a fucking, it's a fucking soccer mom car. Mm-hmm. He's... Like, I don't know if I told if I mentioned this the last time we talked about that, yeah. but it reminds me of when um, in the winter time, like my dad had a four wheeler and he'd uh-huh. like daisy chain and all these uh, sleds to the back. <laughs> so like me and my friends would get and, like, we would like daisy chain like four like sleds, so we'd all get in the back and like uh, at one there's a uh, one time where I was in like the like the second to the front one, mm-hmm. and I fell out. And then two ones behind me just like, wham, hit me in the back of the head, like went, went, went clean over me, both my friends. And I was like just laying there, and I was about to cry. And then I just like held it back. But like, and it's, it's like... And you stood up and you went, hit me again. Yeah, basically, because... And it was like probably the, one of the proudest moments of my life, because like I was like kind of a crybaby when I was a kid. I just cried over everything. And that was the first time that I was a- actually able to hold it back. And, like, yeah, I think that uh, getting a little bit emotional here, but, uh, like, yeah, there was, like, as a kid, I was, like, kind of afraid that uh, I would just, like, never be able to stop crying. That would be an adult and just be kind of this pathetic, like, guy. And I don't... Because, like, my dad, I never saw my dad cry. I never saw any of the uh, grown up uh, men in my family or anywhere uh, openly cry. So it, it kind of made me scared, but uh, now I'm emotionally dead inside, so everything's okay. 
No, I tear up, but I tear up over stupid shit. Yeah. I tear up over fucking Godzilla movies. Uh-huh. I mean, yeah, I, I tear up over movies, too. I, yeah. I don't think... I can't remember the last one I... Well, the last one I think I openly cried at was Toy Story 3. Uh, but, but everybody cried at that one, so it's okay. I remember crying at Pan's Labyrinth. Hmm. I still need to watch that movie. Uh, Spanish Civil War and also fucking Nightmare. Uh-huh. God. Uh, this is Guillermo del Toro said what his next movie is going to be. Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be involving some weird sexual themes again, probably. Uh-huh. I mean, it worked for him with uh, Shape of Water. I really like Shape of Water. Yeah. I love the fucking dick joke. <laughs> God. Yeah. I will also take that as an alternate origin for Abe Sapien. Uh-huh. And Del Toro is one of the few directors in Hollywood that I'm actually I actually anticipate his movies. Uh, even if I don't watch them, it's like I always I'm always interested to see what his next vision is. Yeah, he's a visionary in a way. Mm-hmm. Man, um, I, I was oh, I was trying to remember some oh, I can I tell my ER story. Uh, sure. So I got yeah, the- like for for like before you start with that yeah. like. Like, I just want to put this on tape because, yeah. like, you, you, you've you messaged me on Facebook that uh, you had a stroke. Or, like, but the way, like, you, you were talking I, about something else. Can you pull up the actual wording, probably? Uh, yeah, because you were replying to a previous message that you sent me. Yeah. Uh, is that right? Yeah, so just so you know, I'm, like, old grandma on Facebook. I'll just send a message and forget about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, you said, uh, like before that, it was uh, last Saturday. I said, was making, uh, just for said, context, I'm working on RPG Maker You're saying, games. hey, Art Tony, I'm working on my first Basos for the RPG. And then, like, like, just yesterday, you messaged me, so I think I had a stroke. Holy shit. Any thoughts for Wednesday? <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. Like, I'm like, you know, I, I don't, I'll see if I can take notes, but if you're not okay, don't, don't hesitate to call off. But you, you managed to clarify, saying, oh, no, I, I meant like a stroke over my last match. I'm like, oh, thank fucking Christ. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I know that uh, what made me think about that was that, you know, Rick had yeah. a stroke. He had two strokes last year. So, like, the fact that, like, you would message me after having a stroke didn't seem too far-fetched. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the thing I had to learn. Fucking context. Uh-huh. Fucking context. It'll be on my tombstone. Uh-huh. So, uh, yeah. Like, I'm, 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 I'm I did very... have to go to the yard this week, though. Right. So, t- tell us about that. I got this thing called cyclic vomiting syndrome. Basically, every couple of months, my stomach goes, Hey, fuck you, Zach. And I vomit violently. To the point that I have to go to ER and have a, I have to get a, a, a shot, usually an IV, and I'll get right as rain. I and I said, I can ride through the storm. I was almost half dead. I was so dehydrated. I was laying my face on the toilet, basically, and that's when you know I said, Hey, can you take me to the fucking ER? <laughs> and I went there. And I got monster veins. You can kind of see them, right? Mm-hmm. My veins make nurses excited. Like, ooh, I like his... I'm going to stick my <laughs> needles in him. Well, it took fucking seven injection sites to try and get blood out of me. Mm-hmm. That's how dehydrated I was. <laughs> and that's when they came up with how to fix this fucking syndrome. I've been fighting since I've been fucking four years old. Mm-hmm. I take one pill for puking and another pill for puking. Guess what my doctors forgot to tell me? I'm supposed to take them both at the same fucking time. Mm. I was about to go out there and kick someone's ass. Hmm. Yeah, um, and the best part was I came home looking like I had track marks. Like, hey, look, I joined the family up here. Hmm. Uh, Sorry. It's fine. Yeah, I've been pissed at my doctors, too. Uh, My my dentist, basically. Because, like, I had my my crown put in. My permanent crown is finally in. uh, But I'm not able to use my mouth guard because, like... It, it, like it's too big for to to fit on my uh, in, in my mouth guards. So I gotta wait to see my uh, my uh, mouth guard specialist, jaw specialist, or whatever you call him, o, o, OED or something. I don't know. What, whatever the whatever he's the, Doctor Jaw. Yeah, whatever the yeah Doctor Jaw. Uh, <laughs> that's a nice uh, that's a neat uh, idea for like a Bond villain or something. Doctor Jaw, and he's like, why do they call him that? And he. You see, I lost my jaw, so I cut off this man's jaw and stitched it on here. Mm-hmm. And his whole uh, scam is that he's going to have one of his hitmen so on and other guy's eyes so they can use retinal scans. No, he's just a normal guy and he has a really nice jaw. Yeah. Jaw that can cut glass. Yeah. I tend to go for more outlandish villains. That's my issue. Yeah. Like, you like Bond. I like... 
Like Doctor Doom. Yeah. Like the, the that type of uh, villain. It's I don't know why. I, I just love the idea of I am Eastern European sorcerer, dictator, and mad scientist. Was it you who told? No, I think it might have been someone else. But that, that uh, Doctor Doom, like, he, like the reason he wants revenge against Reed Richards is because he put like a cut, on, like a, a like he says his face was scarred, but he just has like a tiny little cut. Well, on he his had cheek. a tiny cut, but he took an iron mask from a monk and slapped that on his face before it was cooled. Yeah. <laughs> and um, bad idea, Doctor Doom. Huh. See, I like the idea of ju- him just having a tiny cut on his face, and that, and that like he's so like vain and egotistical that he thinks that he's like been permanently scarred. Do you forever. know? And can't show anybody his face ever. Do you know why he was one of Stan Lee's favorite villains? He technically didn't do any crimes. There is no crime against wanting to take over the world. Hmm. No police will arrest you for that, and that's what makes him interesting. Hmm. I mean, unless it's like uh, war crimes and. Oh well, like, no, that's the the side effects. But his main goal isn't a crime technically. Huh. Technically. Mm-hmm. You know, I miss, I kind of miss the older style of villain. Mm-hmm. Before we became like, you know, uh, you know, I, my dad beat me and I, you know, and I cut myself with a razor till I have a pentagram and now I kill people. No, I miss back in the way. like, so you see, I fell into a nuclear reactor and I came out and I shoot radiation. So they call me Gamma Gabe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would be neat to see because I know that the uh, the Joker movie's coming out. I'm still yeah. excited for that. Actually, so am I. But it would be neat to see just a traditional Joker like uh, like in a, in a Batman movie where it's just he's just like a crazy guy who falls into a vat of uh, like chemicals and he's like he just uh, I don't know he's more accurate to like what we was. In the Maybe comics. that's how he gets his thing at the end. Like he falls into the chemicals and that's what permanently dies him. Yeah. It's, they say it's gonna be like he's not gonna wear be like in the full get up until like the like last fifteen minutes or so. I don't mind. Yeah, I, I'm fine with that as long as like it's a it's good a character char- study. Good character study, yeah. By the way, um, do you know my ever favorite random fact is? Do you know why two K happened in the Marvel universe? Hmm. It, uh, why two K possessed Iron Man's armor? Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny. Like I've been seeing a lot of people talk about why two K. Like I've been, like I know that. Uh, Pan Pizza Rebel Taxi. He mm-hmm. uh, he just released a video on uh, cartoon depictions of Y2K around that time. So it's interesting because, and I know that uh, people have been like, one one of the comments in the YouTube comments was, "Oh, I just got finished watching Internet Historian's Y2K video." So like, I wonder what uh, made that what what made Y2K come to your mind right now. I was reading about a dumb Iron Man, huh. and I was thinking about dumb comics. Hmm. That's the thing. I like. I, I, I like the aesthetic of dumb in comics or over the top. And when, what inspires me is a creative process. Hmm. Is that I like characters like Skunk Rock. Yeah. Could I ever, did I ever mention how Skunk Rock came to be on the podcast? I don't think, I, I don't think you mentioned that. No. I, I, I enjoy role-playing games, D&D, stuff like that. And I joined one that was for Marvel. Mm-hmm. And we were doing a villains campaign, and the system that they used had point counts. So if you went lower points, you know, you get more to spend. I fucking went the bargain bin. Mm. My guy shot gas, and his name was Skunk Rock. And um, the funny thing is, he ended up surviving the campaign when, like, Wolverine killed this guy. This guy got killed by um, Punisher. He was the last one standing because he fucking ran away. Mm. And I came up obsessed with this idea of this dumpy villain who kind of sucks at what he does. Like a real person, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I know that, like, there's probably a bunch of Spider-Man villains who are like that. He's actually inspired by the Shocker, most of all. Yeah, yeah, I think you mentioned that. Uh, I almost gave him in his design a fur collar from a it's skunk fur. Hmm. But he wouldn't kill a skunk. He loves him too much. Hmm. Uh Makes you remember of uh, like my pitch for like a Batmite movie. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, where he is. He's like some uh, punk teenager who's uh, like they like there's like the day that uh, Batman is found dead, he decides to like uh, be like to carry on his legacy, even though he's just some kid with like he just uses like uh, like like hard like hardware from his dad's garage, the baseball bat and like thumbtacks or whatever. Does he fight a really bad villain, like a really fucked up one? It, like the one I had in mind was the Penny Plunderer, but in this one he's like surprisingly in, like surprisingly competent. And, you know um, what he should do? Fill his shotgun full of pennies and quarters. Yeah, that's the idea is that he has like 
like a gun that shoots pennies and like the rolls are like uh like the, like a tommy gun you know we actually have uh, you can actually fit quarters in most shotguns i think hmm. yeah i think i've i think i've they that did in, that in resident evil yeah that's what i'm thinking of yeah I'm, I, had to, I had to wonder was that league of extraordinary gentlemen no like yeah there was around that same time one of those shitty action movies right from the from the mid-2000s do you know how i picture the ending he defeats the penny plunder like yeah fuck you who's next and bane rips the door down and walks and <laughs> it's like yeah i think i'm done here I think bane's a really cool villain he's the smart and the strong yeah Oh, yeah, I'm not that from. I'm more familiar with him from the Dark Knight Rises than the, the, in the comics. I know. Well, him, I'm, I'm familiar with him from the animated series. I know him a lot from the Arkham games. Yeah, where they really played up him being Hispanic. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember his portrayal in Batman Beyond. That was like pretty harrowing. Like or, was, the old man. Yeah, he's the old man in the wheelchair. He like none of his muscles work because uh, like Venom this t- took a toll on his body. Does he advocate against Venom? Uh, I. Th- I can't remember his role in that episode. Like the episode was sort of about like the like the school sports team. Like like some of them are like using slappers, which is like a patch version of uh, Venom. So like Terry uh, Batman, he has to like track down the like the uh, warehouse where like it's all being manufactured. Yeah, I had the idea of in like my skunk rock universe that there's a drug that can make superpowers stronger. It accentuates those genetic mm-hmm. materials. Well, that's actually a plot point in The Boys. My idea. Oh fuck. <laughs> my. I-, I know you love it when you know like popular media still my have, like, tw- does ideas that you've thought of just twist recently. Twist on it though is the side effect isn't like oh no I shoot fire and I'm on fire. It's more like. Yet overexert the power and it never comes back. Hmm. And it becomes this big point where some heroes will go, do I take this, you know, thing so I can beat down this monster and lose my power afterwards? Mm-hmm. It's the whole idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's been, like, I think in pr- basically every superhero comic, comic they, had they the have idea something of- like that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if, as long as you do your own unique take on it. Did you know that uh, in the Spider-Man comics, when he was a wrestler, he may have possibly fought the, uh, the thing and a couple other hero wrestlers? Hmm. I know there's one. There's a character named Demo- Demo- Demolition Man, who is my favorite Marvel hero. Because he fucking wears, an, he wears the old Daredevil outfit and just beats the fuck out of people. That's his power, is beating the fuck out of you. Mm-hmm. Uh I haven't watched the rest of the uh, Daredevil Netflix show. I might want to do that before it gets taken off and put on Disney Plus like every other show in the near future. You know, I'm wor- I kind of want to get Disney Plus because I want to see the new Marvel show. Yeah, like I might get it for like a month and then just cancel it. Like the issue is that I don't like subscription services, but I really kind of like Marvel. <laughs> it's the issue. Yeah. Plot twist: This is actually an ad for Disney Plus. Like this is the like this is the like the most like limp-handed. Just like uh, I guess I guess if you want to subscribe to it, then go ahead. This is brought to you by Disney Plus. Oh, oh motherfucker! You better not fucking mess this up. And you hear a cattle prod. Or it's like, or it's like you know, eh, I, I guess it's okay. And you hear a hot shotgun. I mean, it's, it's the best streaming service. Yeah, if you have any other streaming service, cancel it in favor of this. Like you, you just... speaking of shotguns, did you see the new Resident Evil trailer? No, I didn't. They're making a game called Re- uh, Project Resistance. <laughs> I apologize. I just had an aneurysm because I believe I can't believe I forgot it. Oh, I thought you were talking about a new Resident Evil movie. I'm like, Jesus Christ, are they are they really doing that? No, fucking Resident Evil movie. They're, I I, they're, it's an insult to retarded to call them retarded. <laughs> yeah. Basically, it's a game where there's four people. They, they play as you know, like four survivors. Mm-hmm. One person controls monster spawns doors and can play as Mr. X. Apparently, that's what the trailer implies. Hmm. It's going to be therapy because Mr. X will fuck you up and Mm -hmm. now you get to fuck people up as him. Hmm. And possibly Wesker's in it. Hmm. I mean, of course. Possibly. He's been dead since five and they haven't really teased him since. Mm -hmm. Was was he in six? No, um, uh, No, his son was. Oh, okay. And Alex Wesker, who turned out to be a, uh, like, she was a person who was in the same study as him, but they're not related. Okay. What, do you remember how he died? No, I don't. He double-fisted rockets to the face. Hmm. Not just one rocket, two, while he was up to his waist in lava. Hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, if people say that they don't like the over the top stuff in Resident Evil. I, I do. I, I like it. I like both. I like the campy. Yeah, I mean, the campy is what sort of, I guess, elevates it. A global bit. saturation. Complete global lactation. Have you seen the video where he does that? Um, no, he, I don't he does so. a video where it's bloopers and stuff like global, complete global masturbation. <laughs> he also does one that's my personal favorite. It's the Old Spice ad, but it's Wesker. Uh-huh. Reminds me of uh, Metal Gear Solid 3. There was like a special like outtakes segment called like Metal Gear Stupid. <laughs> Where it, like, yeah. like uh, it shows like Raiden getting run, run over by the uh, what do you call it the walking tanks and that one the the Shagohod. yeah the Shagohod. It shows him like running up the runway naked and then just like <laughs> my favorite is there was one where it was um it was the old man the end and he's perving out and the girl like uh-huh. they have like oh and they have him peeking over the desk uh-huh. there's one where uh. Like, bots, like, throws up the C4 and catches it. It's like, and then he, like, slaps it on and everything just explodes. <laughs> Do you know what I love? I want to have a game where it's a squad-based game where you play as Metal Gear bosses. Hmm. You know, PvE. Because can you imagine being able just to play a Sundowner? Yeah. You know, you mentioned uh, Resident Evil. It made me think of, uh, I think it was an article in Game Informer. Mm-hmm. They were talking about, like, hypothetical... Uh, reboots or sequels to yeah. games. One of them was for Tomb Raider. And this was before the uh, the 2014 reboot. Mm-hmm. But it was like saying, like it would open up with uh, the Croft Manor being raided by all these SWAT teams. And like, while uh, like, Croft is taking a shower, and then like when, when you, like she jumps out of the shower, grabs her like dual Brettas, and then you spend that whole level playing as naked Lara Croft gunning down the enemies. Not so anymore. It's, yeah, it's like the complete opposite now. But yeah, if they did like if they do the inevitable reboot, I would be all for. Um, you know what I want for a reboot? Dino Crisis on the re engine. Because hmm. dinosaur games don't really hype up how scary it is. Because most games, it's like, oh no, it's a tear. So it's fucking gonna rip your guts out. Mm-hmm. Also, Resident Evil Two, you can play as a fucking piece of tofu. <laughs> hmm. And also, he has one that is uh, something Ushimoshi, I think. It's a fucking green one who has grenades, who apparently is mother effing the monsters in Japanese. He has infinite grenades. Mm. Yeah. I love how Resident Evil acts like it's taking itself seriously, but it isn't. Yeah. I mean, that's what... uh, I think that Resident Evil 4 hit that sweet spot. Oh. You know what I want as a playable character? Here's who I want in Smash. I want the, the merchant from Resident Evil 4 is playable in Smash. Hmm. And his attacks are every weapon in Resident Evil ever. Like, he pulls out the, ma- the, the magnums. He'll flip back with the flamethrowers. Hmm. Then the final Smash would be the uh, Plaga laser. No, you get the final... It, that's actually a really fucking great one. Hmm. My idea for final Smash, he summons the, the, uh, the fucking um, giant boss. Hmm. And he just fucking tears that stage up. Uh-huh. Hey, who would you want in Smash? Um, this is your pick, and it has to be a character that will never be in Smash. Completely unlikely. Oh, never. Because um, I was going to say Doom Guy, but I think he might be a contender. Um, probably. Ooh, uh, that's a good question. Uh, probably. You're going to have to give me a minute. Uh, what, what, what's yours? Albert Wesker. Hmm. Mainly because his final smash would be Ouroboros. Mm-hmm. And you could have him fucking grab Mario and do the chest thing he did in 5. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of a, of a Nintendo franchise that like has that has been like dead for like dec- oh, a decade. Balloon Fighters? Uh, I don't know. Um, Let's see. Like, cause they, they had representation in like at least one of the uh, Smash games. Uh, At least as a trophy. I think they were an assist trophy in Brawl, if I remember correctly. Uh, um, this is hard. Uh, I'm trying to think of one that I like that's also uh, not being used. Oh, 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 oh I, I got one. What? SpongeBob. Oh! From Battle and from Bikini Bottom. That's great. That mm. could be having teeth and you have a new you know, movie or whatever. <laughs> mm. Now, if it has to be a Nintendo console... Here's my weird pick, the villain from the Star Fox Adventures game, General oh, Scale. Yeah. In his oh, in his final smash would probably be he summons in that fucking ship that mm. has the dragon heads on it. Mm. 
He was scary. Yeah. Like a, like a Dono Esclato. Yeah. I remember that confused me when I was a kid because I thought that I was playing in a different language. What the fuck? Yeah, I thought it was in Japanese. So I kept restarting it. But then I realized, oh, it's just the made-up language. Yeah. You're Japanese for most of them. You're like, no, that's not Japanese. Yeah. Least. Um, like another, another pick I would have for Smash is Homer Simpson. Oh... Uh, you're getting dangerous here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Do you know who I want for one? Uh, fuck. Um, just to piss off of the Castlevania fans, um, is that chick from Curse of the Moon, that Castlevania? Bloodstained. Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. Mm-hmm. Had that character in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, like, but if I had to, like, pick one, like, definitive one that will never, like, never be in Smash, um, Waluigi. <laughs> You won. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's that's, I, that's a correct answer. I will say, however, if I had to pick one of there the Godzilla game on the GameCube, I won fucking Godzilla and Smash. Hmm. His final Smash would be he actually becomes Godzilla. Godzilla is too big for Smash. Uh-huh. God. Speaking of Godzilla, did you ever finish watching uh, the first season of My Hero Academia? I. Like, if you're just not going to watch it, then give me that. Story. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to give it back to you tomorrow, dude. Okay. I apologize. I, I have this issue when I watch things. If I can't finish it, it, you know, I'm sorry, dude. Like, yeah, I hate to make a public call-out post. But, but I'm going to fucking do, this, do it now. I just wanted to do this for my own amusement. Just make you squirm on audio. I'm, oh my God. Like, this is me on caffeine. So, yeah. yeah. This is, like, I think it, I went, like, two days without... Doing the five hour energy, and you only—I only only take half. So like, like, I, 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 I've been trying to like, like, I have managed to successfully wean myself off of uh, caffeine. Like, I only take like the half calf now in the morning, but Mm -hmm. and then nothing for the rest of the day, unless it's five hour energy, which is my new addiction. I'm gonna make a dumb joke. Like, this is ruining my brand too, because I'm supposed to be the chill, like, relaxed guy while you, like, get all hyped. The zany fuck. Now I'm just, like, talking like a million miles a minute, so. I, I don't know. Hey, you know what I wouldn't mind for Smash Bros? If they have Doom Guy, do you know who I want to be as Echo Fighter? Hmm. Master Chief. Hmm. Yeah. Instead of the chainsaw, he could get the, uh. Or the plasma sword. The plasma sword. Actually, that's not a bad one. Yeah, or uh, the uh, Warhammer, the Gravity Hammer. The Gravity... What would that be? Oh, what would that be for Doom Guy, though? Because he doesn't have a hammer. Uh, the... That sword they use. Oh, the that sword. fucking sword from Eternal. Yeah. I really hope that Doom... Do you know what I want Doom Guy to do? I want him to kill a monster and ride its body. Have you ever played Dante's Inferno on that game? No. It's... Mm, it's violently mediocre gameplay why, but it's quite interesting aesthetically. And there's a part where you play as fucking Fajiales, mm. who was a who was apparently a biblical king who got so fucking mad his heart exploded. Mm. Have you ever played H Doom? <sighs> My silence will be telling because <laughs> yeah. I have played many Doom mods. Yeah, you gotta play H Doom. I want to play H Doom with Brutal Doom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except instead of they, they just color all the blood white. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! God. Mm-hmm. Remember that, like, the fucking Patreon game? Like, they had that fucking Monster Girl game, the Breeding Season 1, that was raking in thousands of dollars a month? Oh, yeah. Uh, Did you ever hear what happened to it? No. Uh, the artist got pissed off, so he's got his own game. There's a third game they're making. The, the, four, the, the original's being taken over by fans, and now most of the guys are on a new game. Hmm. And they still are making about the same amount of money each. Hmm. Yeah, it makes me think of the uh, Studio FOW game that uh, just was FOW. A, yeah, uh, they're a they're a porn animation studio, uh, uh, but they they did a Kickstarter for a game. I think it raked in over a million dollars, and it looks really promising. I hope that they they succeed. Um, they managed to like reach all their stretch goals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I was trying not to. Mm-hmm. Like we made eye contact and just like that. <laughs> yeah, like we're we're just thinking the exact same thing. God, you you know what? I, I'm proud of a porn company can do that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can't beat their business. Yeah, it's funny because you have all these people complaining like, Ugh, I can't believe it. Ugh. But well, of course you like th- that's, sex sells. Yeah, exactly. Do you know how many horny mods I would have put on Skyrim if I was 14 years old and played <laughs> it? Yeah. 
oh shit, I probably wasn't one point when I played Skyrim. Mm. But like, if I had the special edition or PC version, there'd be fucking nude mod, skimpy armor mod, pretty girl mod, Argonian cat girl mods. Oh, I stole you that. I admit I do have a skimpy mod that I put on once in a while as a joke. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I also do that. As a joke, I quit yes. doing that because if you go in the white run, all the old ladies have the uh, you know, but <laughs> grandma, can you take this off? <laughs> they should, you know, you know, old people in Skyrim of their own race, hmm. they're really? called elder. Huh. Uh, also, uh, there's a race for vampires, the uh, the, the people who puke on you, and there is a, a race for uh, the Falmer dude, even though he's just a reed colored uh, high elf. Hmm. That's actually where you have a name for the elder and magic grinder. Hmm. A thing I've probably never talked about on this channel. Yeah, like I always thought that was an interesting concept. Just the cancer yeah, reality yeah, the, itself. Yeah, the, yeah, the uh, the magic grinder universe. The idea that like magics run out and people are being like bodies are being ground up to harvest magic. One uh, idea I do have for it, I want I, I, I want to do it. I'm thinking about doing it as a comic. Hmm. It would have to be one of those Gerard, uh, one of those big fucking epic watercolor ones where like there's full page spreads of just the of like the block and you see the smoke coming up. Mm. But unfortunately, I can't draw that and I can't afford to get an artist like that. Yeah. Um, Unless I, I go to a fucking big company like, hello, IDW. <laughs> yeah, we, we we can't have any of this. This is transphobic. This is sexist. I mean, they're probably not as, as like... Go to Image Comics, and I'll go over, and I'm like, Todd McFarlane! And, and he just walks over. I like to imagine he walks around in a full Spawn outfit. That's mm -hmm. what I like to imagine as a kid. <laughs> as a, when I was really young, I read Spawn, and I just imagined Spawn wrote his own comic for some reason. Hmm. Um, I was going to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, it reminds me of... Uh, I know uh, Timothy Lim, who did uh, that... I think I mentioned this before, like, who did the uh, uh, My Hero Magadamia yeah. and, like, all the Trump parody comics. Uh, he actually just actually released, uh, or, like, is, uh, he's about to release uh, Black Hops, which is sort of, uh, like, this uh, uh, rabbit who's a commander of, uh, it's kind of, uh, I don't, I don't I Zootopia in a way? Um, I think he's just like a regular rabbit, but with superpowers. He's like a, it's kind of like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Did like you, that kind of tone. Remember the horse ninja one that they had on Best oh, yeah. Horse? Yeah. I watched that episode last night. I'm like, what the fuck? Hmm. It was made by their brothers who have the same name as they do, but reversed. Hmm. Yeah. Um, but I think Timothy Lim, it's either him or someone else. I, I think it is him, but, uh, he started uh, his own publication house called Iconic Comics. And I don't know if they're accepting submissions, but uh, anyone listening, uh, you might be interested in looking that up, uh, submit to them. Uh, and uh, I, I've actually thought about doing that myself uh, for when I have a finished product, uh, like a finished first issue, just drop that around and look at... I, I want to avoid like the bigger uh, publications. Uh, You're afraid of having Cat Kid in the MCU. <laughs> I mean... You know, there's a tiny part of me, a tiny, tiny part of me that wishes that uh, one of my superhero ideas could be accepted into Marvel or DC. But for me, I always picture, in that scenario, I picture the idealized form of Marvel and DC. Like where, where they walk in and there's a bright, shining red and white. Mm -hmm. And you hear, da, 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 da. Wait, that's fucking start. And it's like, dun, 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 which is the original Justice yeah. League theme from uh, the Bruce Tim universe. Yeah, I want, I want to do a Bruce Tim anime. I want to have a Bruce Tim style for a skunk rock comic. Mm. Just have skunk rock like take a huge hit of coke and I'm yeah, let's do this. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, that wind's throwing up. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Yeah, we passed the hour mark. Uh, we can still talk if you want. Um, any any ideas? Anything you want to talk about? I want to do the creative process again, even yeah. though we kind of did this earlier. Yeah, we did sort of sprinkle it in here and there. Um, I, I think I decided on what comic I'm going to try and draw out and do. Hmm. I'm going to try and do... Uh, it's called Retails of Dunwall. Hmm. Imagine Walmart. Imagine the Walmart in the shitty small town you live in if you live in a shitty small town. Hmm. 
but it's built over a gigantic breach in reality, and horrible demons called meta-demons come out and devour reality and want to destroy the whole world. And the only two people who can stop it are a big Swedish guy and a dude named Sean who fought a cabbage or a cribbage with a kind of vegetable for most of his young adult life. <laughs> and that was my narrator voice. <laughs> Like, do you have an idea of, like, how many issues it's going to be? Uh, the first one's going to be six issues, um, and there are, there are six different stories, sort of. Uh, and the whole theme is it's over his first or, uh, uh, his first year working at Dunwall's. Mm-hmm. Dunwall Department Store. Hmm. Yeah, because, like, from what you've been bringing in, I feel like it could be, like, a pretty self-contained six issues. Yeah. Like, uh, and I think that this is probably, like, the one that... Uh, I, I consider it to be the most likely to, that you're going to be able to finish on a, like, th- actually finish. Yeah. And, like, I hate to bust your balls over this, but... Or a skunk rock, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this this seems more self-contained than something like skunk rock, yeah. which takes place in a larger universe with Orca and, like, yeah. all this other crap. I hate doing that, but, like, I'm a world builder. That's my hobby. I mean, me too. Uh, I've been trying, like, and I feel like the older you'll get, you'll be at m- my level. <laughs> I, like me tooting my Dude, own horn. Again. Yeah, I completely agree. You're sort of a mentor figure in the whole comic angle. Well, I will agree with you on that. Um, Except but, you get cut in half and you get robot chicken legs because that's what fucking the animated co- cartoon will do to you in this continuity. <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned before, the comic project I'm working on right now is Raytard Control. I, I have to like sort of emphasize the AE and uh, because like a like, it's hard to say. It's surprisingly hard to say. It's, it makes you sound pretentious, which is probably the right angle to go for with, with this one, just to make it as obnoxious as possible. If there's a, if there's a character talking to you, they go, you're a ray turd! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can say it any way you want. Does, is his beam called the, the, the ray tard ray? Uh, I'll have to think about something more clever than that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I've, I, I feel like this is a good one to roll with right now. It's sort of like a good medium between something like uh, Yesterday Kids, which is very has more strict world building and characters, versus something like Mel Murray, which is just all over the place. Anything that crosses my con- subconscious, just throw it in there. That's a thing with Dunwall that's important. And this is something that I might stress, is that each issue is its own separate universe in a way. Hmm. So that's how I could say retcon something very easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some shit like that. Yeah, kind of like The Simpsons. Yeah. Yeah, they do that. Yeah. For um, real, each episode is own universe? Well, people like to think that oh. because, like, The Simpsons has a rolling timeline where it's like, you know, it's like season eight had Marge and Homer meeting in the 1970s, but season 18 has them first meeting in the 90s. Because, you know, you have to, like, keep your character's age accurate to, to the, audience. To the current, current year and the audience and everything. So you have to, like, fudge the, fudge the timeline, fudge parts of the universe. Can't you wait till Homer and, uh, and Homer and, uh, what the fuck? I forgot her name. I for- Marge. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I apologize. That may have been a stroke. <laughs> but if Homer and Marge met in the 2010s. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, hey, you like my SoundCloud page? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be in the 2030s. They'll do that. And then, like, that, that'll be around the time all the character voices are done by, like, computer software. Like fucking Robot Jones. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hello, Marge. It's me, Homer. <laughs> then- oh, Homer. It's time we need to take the kids to school. And then, and then, like it just, and then, like they'll do a live episode, and they'll just be glitching out. <laughs> Homer starts saying, he starts going, "All work and no play makes Dan Castanella a dull boy." <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, they already fucking did that joke. Oh yeah, yeah, one of the best Treehouse of Horror episodes. I like the Treehouse of Horror. I will watch him over an average episode, to be honest. Yeah, that's another example of uh, like, like more accurate example of uh, each episode taking place in its own universe. Yeah. I also like the opening skits they do. Oh, yeah. Um, I haven't mean to go back and watch uh, class. I, I hate to take my fo- the focus away from my own project and yeah. talk about The Simpsons, but it's fine. The Simpsons, damn it. Classic Simpsons, for that matter. You know, I, like, I've been meaning to go back and watch uh, stuff like Who Shot Mr. Burns, uh, some of the like real classics. I, 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 I've always... I liked Family Guy's 
earlier episodes more, but I really like the, the dynamic between the Simpsons family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, um, but yeah, the, the current project I'm working on is the uh, Funny Robots blow, blow Shit Up comic that I, I'll be able to do. Like, yeah, because I think about uh, staging, for one, where uh, something like Yesterday Kids needs more, like, concrete uh, technology stuff, which is one of, one of the reasons I deliberately went with the uh, giant robot having, like, stretchy limbs and being able to stretch all over the place. I like the mouth and the chest. Yeah, it's sort of inspired by Grunlagon. I have a question. C- can it, or uh, will there be, like, a tiki torch, or, like, a tiki one? That'd be a good idea. Yeah. Oh, my God, he has to fight the regional variants. It's like fucking Gundam. Oh, yeah. And the African one arrives. <laughs> it's just got a... Black plant paint and red around its no. mouth. <laughs> no, you have to, what it should be though. It should be like a fucking like. Oh, that actually not that. Maybe like an African mask almost. Hmm. What's its attack? It's called the laser spear. Yeah. I think is if I want to go offensive, I might want to just go all the way. God, you know what fucking bugs me? But the, the like, fucking the, African Gundam in the show had a fucking zebra pelt on it. What the fuck? How big was that fucking zebra that they killed? Did they kill like a hundred and stitch them together? Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to start thinking about, like, if I want to make something that's made to offend people or made to push the envelope. You have to make a, uh, a, a, I would recommend a persona. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's a, that's one option. I don't know. Like, I'll have to think about that just because, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't really give a shit, but I guess for the sake of protecting my family or whatever, it's like, that might be a good idea. And also, like, I don't know. It's you, a, um... One option I had for like distribution because I like webtoon obviously isn't an option. I think they're strict with uh, what content you put on there. Like like I'm thinking about like sites that would actually even allow the title for that matter. Uh, I heard actually the itchio. I saw the itchio is actually uh, that you can publish plat- uh, publish comics on that. Itchio is a really good platform so yeah, far. You can, apparently, you can publish anything on there. Uh, like any medium, at least. Because I thought it was only for games, but I saw, no, you can do, like, art, you can do, yeah, art books or comics. Or software. Software, visual novels, regular novels. Even. Porn. Uh-huh. No, yeah, obviously. That's what the internet's made for. I fucking love that musical. <laughs> I remember the uh, the World of Warcraft version of that. You know what I know more? The Foster's Home of Imaginary Friends version. Hmm. God. That's yeah. your was good. What was the babysitter's name? Uh, Frankie. Frankie. I like Frankie. I mean, yeah, Zone in particular likes Frankie. Um, <laughs> a lot, like a lot of uh, certain artists. Too. Hey, can I share my dumb creative project idea to help uh, viral market my, my fucking comic idea? Sure. I'm going to make something that looks like it's an NES game in appearance and graphics, and that's like the monster manual of the Dunwall universe. <laughs> And it's basically a parody of Leprechaun 2, where mm-hmm. Leprechaun 2 had the fucking, like, pixel art. Leprechaun eat potato. Leprechaun eat gold. Leprechaun bite turns you into Leprechaun. Hmm. Actually written like that, and the, the voice doesn't read the text right now. It always bugs me. Mm-hmm. I hate when a movie called Leprechaun 2 is an, it has some flaw. Hmm. Um, it made me think of uh, this. Because I, 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 uh, one of the other comic documentaries I watched was on the... Uh, <laughs> A 24-hour comic challenge and one of the people speaking one of the people being interviewed in that was uh the creator of boilerplates i don't know if you're familiar with this but it's name this, has me interested yeah boilerplate it was this uh art project made by this guy it was, he was originally going to make it into a comic but he built this uh like little figurine uh like this basically steampunk robot mm-hmm. and what he would do was uh take pictures of this robot and find uh old archived uh photographs of like cities cr- and just place that uh that figure in the crowds and like say you know and like frame it as this sort of like uh documentary as a sort of like i guess mockumentary where mm-hmm. it's like or, like, trying to trick people into believing it. That there, there was this robot made in, like, the 1910s by this scientist. And it was kept hidden for a long time. But if you look in these, uh, like, he's, like, hidden in these uh, photographs. where uh, And, like, he actually got a few people to uh, believe it for a little bit. I think... Uh, kind of almost like fucking Slenderman in a way. Uh, yeah, basically. I knew... I, I know probably three or four people who honestly believed. Yeah. 
apparently, yeah, apparently J.J. Abrams, uh, he was, I think he's still doing this, trying to adapt uh, Boilerplate into a movie. So I would see that. I would like that. Yeah, so it's really interesting. Do you know who would be a good one, probably? Guillermo del Toro would yeah. probably do a good oh, one. Oh, yeah. Because he really likes the archaic art form. Yeah, and robots, obviously. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, we can wrap up now. All right. Um, I, I never really know how what to say to wrap these things up other than I've been Tony. I've been Zach. And this has been The Monkey Bar. <laughs>